come on. Mother North is dead. God, that's so annoying. This is close. This is really close. I just needed like 25 life. Oh. Hi, Alana. <laughs> Guys, say hello to Alana. That's uh, that's my daughter's best friend. <laughs> How are you, Alana? You're probably playing play with Liv. Tell Liv I said hi. <laughs> so by uh, by checking out Raid Shadow Legends, just so you know, you actually get uh, a whole bunch of freebies. And the freebies for checking out Raid Shadow Legends is you get a one day XP boost, three Raid Flasks, one Ancient Shard, and a Void Champion, which is a four star champion, uh, Bulwark, and 50 gems. So if you download Raid Shadow Legends from the link, you actually get all that for free just by coming and hanging out and checking the game out. Hey guys, I gotta tell you about this super unique, brand new game that just came out. It's called Gemstone Legends, super friendly on the free to play community, and it has taken the concept and changed it and made it something brand new. I know people are worried about match three games all blending all together. Gemstone Legend has created a way to where you actually have diagonal moving, you actually share the same board, and you actually make three matches before it switches over to a player. Brand new, completely awesome concept that they have set up. You also get these dragons that assist you coming in, giving you healing, special attacks, debuffing. You are now using scrolls to open up new heroes. And the thing that I love about this game the most is that you can take your three star heroes and you scale them all the way up to six stars to where you are never feeling confined to just having these little minion dudes. You can actually grow them and they can be quite significant in the long run, makes it super easy on your bank account. And you also get these super awesome artifacts that you're actually leveling up too. All right, so let's discuss Ruben. Ruben literally looks like King Joffrey from Game of Thrones. He's pretty creepy. It's definitely creepy. Uh, I don't like that. I don't like that. As far as his passive ability, it has innate resistance against mana generation. Doesn't apply to status ailments that stop mana generation or steal mana generation. So uh, pretty much it says that it laughs at your boy Teleria. Girl Teleria? We haven't decided that fully. Uh, but Teleria does nothing in terms of messing with his mana. So anything that impacts the mana like that is what he resists. Stats wise, 766 is really good. 737 is pretty decent. 1310 on the health. Statistically above average on pretty much everything. About average on the attack power, but defense and the health is pretty good. He's running at fast speed. Deals 215% damage to the target, minor to the and nearby enemies. All allies get minus 50% reduction to damage received from status effects for four turns. And an elemental link summons a fire minion for all fire allies, 5% and 10% attack inherited from the caster. So he's dealing damage, and then he's also setting it up so that there's also a reduction of damage received from status effects. Doing damage with their status effects, such as like a dot, it's going to reduce it by 50%. Is it setting it up so if Gravemaker goes off on Reuben and any of your allies, it's going to deal half that damage over the status effects. So that's a status effect. Anything poison, water damage, stuff like that. That is not, from my understanding, direct damage. So if Jeffron goes and hits, it's not going to reduce that by 50%. Does help that he's running at fast speed. I think that they tried to set up a hero that could counteract Teleria, but I'm just not really seeing it. I, th I think it is nice that it is at fast speed and it does do it to all enemies. Would have been pretty useful against like Teleria Vila combo. I could see that being a thing for sure. I'm just not overwhelmingly excited or impressed. There is definitely some usage. 215 to the target nearby uh, enemies is relevant being at fast speed. It's kind of offensive defensive hero. I don't think he's bad. I don't think he's great. I would say that he kind of fits in the middle of things. He is a cleric hero. 
Uh, so there is probably some potential for you to have Cleric Emblems to be using on him. If you're going to be using Cleric Emblems, I would most likely focus on the attack power and then defense. His health total is pretty good. So the prioritization would be the standard, which is attack power, defense, health, uh, as far as making sure that those are high. And he could maybe fit in. When I'm looking at him against the Titans, I don't think that this really impacts anything or changes anything because he sets it up so that you don't have to use... I, I still think you're still using antidotes. Only place that he would be in on the Titans is going to be mostly for the high tile damage. On offense, some usability, but just not overwhelmingly that great. They have 12 different regions that you can explore, three different levels of difficulty. They've got a bunch of new features coming out. You also have player versus player, uh, battle arena going on. You got tournaments going on. And then you got guilds to join so you can hang out with all your friends, bring them over. You can discuss the game and talk about different tactics. You got daily, weekly, monthly missions going on and so much more content that is set to be coming out for this brand new exciting game. So make sure you check this game out. Click the link below. Come join me. Come hang out with us and I'll see you on the game. What would have made Ruben good? I think Ruben is still pretty decent because you figure like Gravemaker's out, Fila's out, Teleria's out. I think that this is a pretty good counter. On offense, I do like him on offense. Uh, countering Teleria, also countering Gravemaker and Vila because most of the damage is over time. Uh, Vila not so much uh, now, but before. Uh, yeah, it was mentioned that Jabberwock, Jabberwock Poison is probably not the end of the world though. Um, um, on defense, maybe some usability. He is running at fast speed. I'd see him maybe fitting in the corner. Possibly a flank. A decent hero, but nothing too crazy. Um, but I'll know a little bit more when when I get him, because I'll probably get him towards the end of the month. Morgan Le Fay. Yeah, I guess Morgan Le Fay could actually be good that he could counteract Morgan Le Fay. Heroes like Victor. The problem is, is those heroes are just aren't on defense. The biggest ones that he's going to be facing against are going to be... Like, he doesn't do anything against, like, Ursna or Kill Hair. Says Shaq gets him. Anything purple pretty much doesn't matter. I will probably post this in the link below as well, too. Huge shout out to Governor. Uh, dude is a beast. He took over uh, Zephyr in terms of helping out and giving a lot of information regarding beta. And this is to kind of give you guys some information as far as what's going on. So... Small Giant has finally released the ability. This will be coming out. My guess is probably this is probably going to be in January or February. And this all might change. So this is all in beta. So for all we know, it could be completely different. We don't know. But this now currently sets it up so you can actually battle against your current alliance members. And they can be online or offline and they can, you can set any type of defensive set. So all you have to do is pretty much just go in. It's very simple to go and go fight your guy, um, which the first person I fought was Petrie. <laughs> it was fun um, because it was in my lines in beta. But uh, very simple, straightforward. You click on him, you go, you battle him up. It shows in the chat, you defeating him or not. And this allows it to where you can test different things out see it see what's going on uh and just try different sets i think that this will help kind of bring people to be a lot more organized i also with this feature to be honest with you i don't know how impacting it is because i feel like there's still going to be too much variables to where i don't know if i'm getting all of the information that i really want to get i think that this is a little bit late in terms of its effectiveness because i think at this point we kind of have an idea as far as what heroes are good on defense what heroes are not um i think that it would be a lot more useful if it set it up to where you could
battle them during wars um, and then be able to fight them that way. Obviously, they turned it into a situation to where you can purchase refills in the shop so you can fight people again, um, which we kind of figured that would happen with them trying to figure out a way to get you to spend money on a feature that shouldn't cost money. But it is what it is. I think that the system could be really cool if they set it up to where they make it so you can fight people in wars. I think that that would add a lot more of an element. But at this point, especially towards the later, the later kind of end game, I think you pretty much can go battle just about any tier team. So this is being tested currently right now. We'll see how it actually comes out. Currently right now you have five, five friendly match energy. So you've got, you've got up to five times you can battle. And then it regenerates once per day at five. And then if you want to do more, you can buy more. So that's kind of that's kind of the situation. What do you guys think about this? Being able to fight your own alliance members. Um, I think that this might be a little bit more effective for, it'll definitely be a lot more effective for making content. I would tell you that if you wanna, if you wanna try new things. Um, I just, I don't know how much information you're getting. Now, I think that this would be absolutely amazing if it was in war, you could battle ahead of time. I think that that would give you a lot more information uh, to try different things out. Um, and like raid tournaments, I think that that would be cool. I don't know how I feel about it just being just a regular defense because honestly right now, your defense doesn't really mean anything at this point. Your defense is only as good as war and you're not being able to test this for war. Uh, being able to have your team go up in cups doesn't really matter. Uh, you're not really getting any sort of incentive. Having a good defense doesn't really do you any good except for in wars and you can't even test it in wars. So that's kind of why I think the feature is a cool idea. I think that it brings some element of kind of newness to it, but I don't, I just don't know how effective or how important it is going to be at this point, unless they add the feature to where you can test out raid tournament defenses or war defenses and being able to test them out with the war rules and the tournament rules. If they did that, then I think it would be huge. Um, I, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm just not seeing it. What do you guys think? One of the features that I wish that they would add to this being able to attack your friendly alliance members is for a simple thing to where you can click on a war rule to add to the battle. So you click on it, you click on it, you go fight it, and then you can select a war rule to battle against. I think that that would be amazing. If they made just that one simple fix, being able to make it so you could select a war rule and attack that defense with a specific war rule, then that would change a lot of different things. It'd be very useful. Which by the way, if you guys aren't already subscribed to my channel, you're a jerk. If you're not already subscribed, because I have like no subscribers and um, I need you to subscribe to my channel.